As the world marks the centenary of World War One, there is much discussion about the legacy of Australia's ANZACs and their contribution to the nation's identity. But few people know that 200 Australians of Chinese descent served in the Australian Army. An exhibition acknowledging these Chinese Australians' contribution to the Great War is now open to the public at Melbourne's Chinese Museum. To date, we have identified 206 Chinese Australians who went to war. These young men saw themselves first and foremost as Australians. One of them, Benjamin Moiling, actually said in a newspaper interview, if Australia is good enough to live in, it's good enough to fight for. Under the white Australia policy, it was difficult for young Chinese men to enlist. There were physical requirements that had to be met, as well as some race-based restrictions. Some were rejected. A few reasons. At that time, the minimum height requirement was somewhere around 163 centimeters tall. They also had to meet a requirement about their ancestry. In Section 13, Part B of the Defense Act of 1909, there is a clause stating that people not substantially of European origin would not be able to enlist to serve with the AIF. It was a reflection of that society's view that they were trying to build up a particular kind of Australia for themselves. However, these restrictions did not deter Chinese Australians in their determination to fight for their country. From merchants to pastors, from farmers to community leaders, Chinese families sent their boys off to war. We realize that some of them are just simply too young. We have a young man, Private William Foon. He had his parents signed off the permission forms to allow him to serve. And about a year and a half later after his service, we found a newspaper article stating that he celebrated his 16th birthday in the Western Front. A highlight of the exhibition is the postcards and the letters sent home by soldiers on the front lines. Through these beautifully decorated cards and handwritten letters, we can see the love that prevailed despite the horrors of war. One of the collections comes from the Shang family. Sidney Shang was sent to the Western Front and he maintained constant contact with his mother and his girlfriend. And he sent back about a hundred or slightly more than a hundred postcards to them detailing his experiences. That gave us an insight to what it was like to maintain contact with family and loved ones while in the war zone. And it also revealed to us as well how much information was actually censored while on the front. Of the more than 200 Chinese Australians who went to war, 19 received a total of 23 gallantry awards and 40 died in action. But as many returned servicemen discovered, medals don't guarantee a good life or a hero's welcome. We have Billy Singh, who is a very well-known sniper. In the history books, he is known as the assassin who took out a lot of enemy soldiers. And Billy Singh's father came from Shanghai. Now, he grew up in Claremont in Queensland on a farm. Now, when he came back to Australia, perhaps it was what he had seen during the war, what he had experienced or, or what he had done that weighed on him because we know that he did not have a very easy life. He died quite young. He died in poverty. He died alone without family surrounding him and lay for quite some time in the cemetery without much recognition until quite recently in the early 2000s when a proper monument was built for him in Brisbane. Chinese Australian history is a part of Australian history. It is not an alternative view, it is not an untold story, it is part of the stream of histories that make up this nation's story.